Howdy y'all, it's BDC. Thanks for coming to check out this video. Today we are doing more Hard Space Shipbreaker. So, um, this one's kind of a, a continuance of the uh, distraction that I found myself in, in doing Hazard 5 teardowns for the earlier kind of starting to get going player. Um, these unlock, I think, at player rank 7, and with my guy here, uh, that's still doing these in the career play, He's still rank 9, so I'm still at these uh, hazard uh, level 5 ships. So this one, specifically, is going to be the Mackerel Heavy Cargo. Um, yesterday I did the Mackerel Station Hopper, and then I've done a couple of the uh, Javelins, because um, those pop up here at hazard 5. So um, I figured I'd just go ahead and do this, and then I might do one other one to finish up basically all of them. But anyway, like I said, it's a, distra <laughs> it's a distraction. So, um, here we go. The Shippy Klein Mark 7. That is our heavy cargo mackerel of the day that we are going to tear apart. So, we're going to do this with the drain enabled, and let's see, I already came back in once. I had to go and take a screenshot. Um, but I didn't really do anything. So, uh, here we go. We'll see what happens. So these uh, these heavy cargos are just like the um, the station hoppers and the light cargo. Um, basically, the other macros out there, they have the same basic design. They're basically rectangles, uh, small ships. Um, most of them will have this outer hull plating. Uh, usually, they'll have one to two or three antennas on them. Um, front cockpit. Uh, structurally, they're the same. The internal stuff is what's going to be different on these guys. Um, but they are largely uh, similar. So, like all other ships, I start with peeling off all the external stuff that I can, and then also doing what I call uh, a site inspection. And this site inspection, I get that from uh, real estate inspection stuff. Um, just use a scanner, poke around real quick. The entire thing is pressurized. So that's something I'm going to have to contend with, and I need to be careful in taking um, taking stuff apart that would otherwise uh, penetrate into the uh, into the ship here. So let's keep going with the external stuff. Uh, I'm going to take this little—I don't know what to call this. I call it the front bumper on the cockpit. It kind of looks like something like that. Um, keep something from uh, penetrating the cockpit glass. So we'll go into that. Let's kick the light on here, since now we're up close and personal. And there's a few cut points on this thing to take uh, care of, but it's easy. These uh, mackerel ships, for those of you all that are watching that are brand new to this, um, they are typically torn down um, in in uh, in a, bleh, I was saying, they're typically torn down in in uh, like uh, open shift, like what I'm doing right now, where there's no timer. That's what I was trying to get out of my uh, out of my brain there. Um, in half hour, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, if you're doing a really, really strict, complete tear down, uh, and that's what I aim for. And then, obviously, this uh, whole series of YouTube videos that I'm doing here, I've got I think maybe eight or ten of them up now. Um, they're all complete tear downs, and so I go through every little step uh, and show my. Um, my uh, method of thinking, you know, my thought processes as I move from section to section, that kind of thing like that. So, um, I would not expect this uh, to be a, a very, very long video. Um, so, let's get the rest of some of this off. Part of what I'm doing, um, again, this is for the newer players out there. If you see me switch from the cutter to the grappler and then tap the grappler on an object, it's to see whether or not it is separated from its... Uh, from its main thing, assuming that I've got all the cut points cut and all that jazz like that. So, if it glows blue like this as a blue outline and kind of does that little blue sparkly whatever thingy on it, then you know it's a uh, an independent piece and you can do something with it. So the front bumper guard, as I like to call it, he can go in there to the processor that leaves him open. So now we have all these um, side hull protection plates um, ostensibly to protect the airlock entrance, I'm guessing, I think I saw it on here, um, there's our cargo hatch right there, I'm guessing it's on the uh, starboard side of the ship, there she is. So we can peel these guys off, um, and this is just all processor fodder here, uh, nothing important about him. There's going to be little mount points here that you can uh, cut and take off, 
sometimes you can use the split saw on this, but I prefer to use the uh, stinger um, when uh, when there's some kind of obstruction. Now something like this, where we've got these longer cut points and the backdrop is empty, which I stress a lot. Backdrop, um, being mindful of your backdrop in a lot of my videos, you can uh, just use the split saw on it. Um, let's see. Uh, we can do this right there. Let's see, he's still going to be attached on the top, I or the uh, bottom rather, so. There we go. Yep. So that's what, and I think six cut points total for that. So we can get these pieces off. Get him out of here. The grappler's nice and strong now. Um, I have not done anything on my player as of yet to upgrade it. Um, I did just unlock charge push, but... I'm going to try to not use it in this um, because I'm trying to cater all these Hazard 5 uh, videos to, like I mentioned earlier, to the player that is still learning this game and hasn't done a lot of teardowns and still looking for guidance on stuff. And, and I don't want to have all this <laughs> all this pimped out tooling and blasting through everything because it doesn't give an, an accurate uh, portrayal or representation of what the actual real career is. Uh, gameplay's like. So, there you go. Again, this is open shift, and it is a uh, career. This is not free play, so I don't have unlimited tethers or any of that jazz. Um, I'm actually slumming it as a newish player. I'm hoping this will, well, obviously it will. I think I'm at 90-95% of getting through uh, rank 9 here, but I'm hoping this will uh, finish me and get me to rank 10 um, on the quick. So, let's get our cut points there. Watch your backdrop. So... One out, point it up at the sky. And then I'll go to the stinger for this guy down here. And for that guy right there. And then there's one more left down there. We can use the uh, split saw on him. Boom. So, here we go. And get in there. Go we'll find your new home in the uh, processor of love. Oh, come on. Gotta grab the frame. If those little plates will come off, they'll separate off of the uh, metal framework on this thing. But yeah, these mackerel ships—they're the uh, of the three classes in here. They're the easiest ones to do. Um, they're fairly routine. I think the only one that really um, deviated from all the others was the Exo Lab one. Uh, that was that was a pretty bizarre ship to do. Mm. At least the uh, the one that I did. In free play to get accustomed to it, and the Exo Lab boat uh, variant of this mackerel is one of the newer ones um, in this game from Build 0 0.4.0. So that's what all this is, by the way. So these new hazard levels are different than in the older uh, older build. I think it was 0.3.1. That was um, they had. Easy, medium, hard, and very hard, I think, were the difficulty levels. And then they just changed it all around. Um, probably to make it a little bit more um, more uh, detailed and intensive. Let's see, I don't need fuel. So, with the other difficulty levels, you had these fairly massive jumps and things. And they were fine. I mean, you know, you could do hard and very hard, and, and they weren't terribly different. Um, but this is a little bit more intricate. I think that's the word I was looking for. Uh, and how they um, how they do the difficulty on this, which I actually kind of appreciate it. Um, with the new leveling structure, it makes it more of a steady walk, um, a steady progression as you get to the higher levels, um, kind of a thing. Whereas in the other one, it wasn't like that. So always hold on to something, just in the event Airlock that you're completely dropping. totally wrong. It's a habit I get into when you flip a door switch to go into an airlock or somewhere else. Always hold on to something because. If you get surprised by unequal uh, atmospheric pressures, one's pressurized, one section is, and then another section is vacuum, then you don't want your body to get, whoosh, you know, blown and knocked around and that kind of thing like that. So, cool. Asteroid shards. That's some kind of, uh, that's a com comms array. That's neat. Um, there's our data drive. Good deal. Got that early. There's our cockpit. There's our atmospheric... Process it right there, or regularly, or rather. Um, and let's see. 
It would be nice to be able to disable that door ahead of time, but this entire thing is pressurized. Asteroid. I wonder what kind of asteroids it's supposed to be. It's kind of cool. They just all go into the uh, um, go into the furnace anyway. So usual stuff. If I had the key, I'd pop the key in here and shut the uh, fuel off that way, but I don't. So we'll get to him in a second. We're gonna do the port side and the starboard side's uh, uh, fuel tank valves that shuts off uh, fuel to those guys. And for those that are unfamiliar with this, you see the light on the uh, piping there. That means there's a light fuel line going through there. It's um, we wanting to shut that off, so it allows us to be able to uh, cut into it, manipulate it, whatever we need to do, kind of a thing. The other thing to do is swing over here. These emergency shut off. In the past, I've had those actually cause a fire before. Um, in an explosion. I uh, have not had it happen since. Um, but the normal way to do it is to disable it through uh, the use of this terminal by using a key in there. But I've not seen the keys yet, so I'm kind of confused if it's something that unlocks later. Um, I swear that they're not at the uh, at the um, kiosk, so I don't know. Okay, the next goal is to depressurize this uh, ship here. Um, let's try this. The thing I'm concerned about is, is if I hit that regulator right there, it'll depressurize the entire back half of the ship, but will leave the cockpit sealed up. So let's find out. Okay, good. All right. Sometimes this happens on ships, and so you have to contend with, now you've got two separate chambers split. Um, and there's two ways to attack it. A do something to slice up the door framing so there are no more doors that can seal up. This is before you um, shut uh, the atmospheric regulator off. The other is, if you cannot deal with it that way, um, is to deal with the portion of the ship that's already depressurized, start taking it apart, taking stuff out of it, get all the loose objects out of it, so then when you go to that next section to depressurize it, if you have to forcibly open a door or if it's just a matter of flipping a switch or whatever, that you're not going to have a bunch of crap flying around. You know what I mean? So, um, okay. That was easy. So the ship's now depressurized. And let's make sure the airlock is still going to be uh, pressurized. Yeah. So we could, and this is something I neglected to do the other day when I was doing this, airlock could open him up drop. before continuing because I accidentally left a, uh, an airlock pressurized. Open him up with the inside depressurized. Now, when you open up the, uh, the airlock, all the doors open, so now you don't have to worry about anything. So we are good. We are red all around, no green spots. And let's go to the back and get the thruster out. So... That'll be our starting point on this one. Uh, this is my normal routine. Something I did on the station hopper video that I did yesterday was I uh, started taking stuff out of the bottom of the ship prior to getting the thruster out. So get him out, send him off into uh, processor heaven. Here comes our thruster. You point to the back of it and just gently pull this thing out. Use your suit to do it. You don't have to use a grappler. And once the thruster's out, you can take the tether and send her straight down. Now we can pop open this entire back section of the ship here. And we can do that by hitting these four cut points. Not these. Not those down there, but these guys. Fuel is already shut off, so I don't have to worry about that. So stinger tool on these four guys. And let's see. With the fuel shut off, it's not going to drag the tanks with it, so this entire piece will come out nice and uh, easy-like. So one, probably two tethers on this to get this into the uh, processor. This is kind of far back, and you don't want this thing to go into the furnace. So, and I mentioned this a lot in my other videos, the thing I like to do is I like to point it to the outside here, as you can tell, rather than straight in, because I want to make sure it gets around this center section. Sometimes those large pieces will get caught up in there, and then they'll start dragging back. Then before you know it, it's getting sucked into the furnace. So that's uh, that's no bueno. So we're not going to have that happen here. Okay. Volatiles, fuel tanks. Let's see these guys out. Um, let's see. 
Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Boom. Those guys are out. And I can go ahead and tag this uh, terminal while we're at it. I don't normally like to pull electrical out until later, um, but I'm going to go for these floor plates here. Uh, get these guys out. Uh, I did this in the station hopper video, and this is pretty much a, um, a standard thing that I do here. Um, since all of your valuables are in the very center of this boat, and you've got these you know, three or four odd four plates, just take these guys out, send them to their processor. Now you have a straight shot for all your stuff to go boom, 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 straight down to the barge. So, pretty simple. Uh, it will uh, speed a lot of this up. That comms array, I'm guessing, is probably money. Um, you know what? How about we do this? Uh, is that considered a cut point? It is. Okay, are there, yeah, there's two more clamps on this guy. The, uh, this comms array is not going to always be in the heavy cargo. There's probably going to be a variance of things that will be inside um, of these cargo ships. Um, and that's true for the other ones as well. There are slight variances. They're not very uh, strict and wooden in nature, you know. Um, so you could have a, um, a heavy cargo uh, gecko or javelin and the, uh, uh, the, the contents inside of it will be different. Like the, uh, the ion rings, the structure of the javelin, even though it's the exact same model, can be in different places where you can have two sets of them. Uh, same with refuelers. Some of them have a lot of tanks. Some of them have none or a few, that sort of thing like that. So, the comms array here, the point of what I was getting at here, is that that is not necessarily universal to this thing. There could be other types of cargo in here, and it's kind of a, um, um, a luck of the draw type thing as to however it spawns in. So, the point is, is to get these four bottom plates out. Um, this is one of the easier things to do. Get those out, and then now we have a straight shot to grab all sorts of stuff conveniently straight down to the barge. Um, all of our valuables, computer terminals, the electrical junction box, if there's one in here, the atmospheric regulators, the strip lights, all that. So now that I've pulled that bottom plate off and I've got this uh, little comms array um, separated from it, I can tether him straight down. See? Easy. Same with the uh, reactor, but it looks like this boat doesn't have one unless... Sometimes they could be up in the front. Um, he could be actually over there. Yeah, there's the plate form right there. So our reactor's up there. Sometimes the reactors are sitting up top right here. And it's just a matter of grabbing a tether and yanking him straight down. But uh, since, this, um, since this space down there is uh, um, allocated for cargo use, they have the reactor in a different spot. So, we will get to that when we get to that. I'll go up here and re-up and grab... I don't need tethers, really. Uh, let's see. I'll grab fuel and O2, the usual. And I'm still playing this, by the way, like I mentioned earlier, with no upgraded O2 capacity, no upgraded thruster capacity. I think the only thing I've been able to modify on the thrusters is my uh, braking speed, and that's it. Um, and I like a lot of that because I tend to fly really fast uh, in this as much as I can and, and all that, so I like having a, a powerful brake. So, since this is uh, um, a complete teardown, I'm going to grab all the lights off because it's annoying. And then all of these little multi-tool guys here, these are money, from what I remember at least. All nice and easy, just float up here, right where the uh, bottom plates used to be, and throw everything down out of the floor. Boom. Piece of cake. Go away. There we go. And let's see, anything else of value in here? Uh, I've got these fuel tanks. I do want to get these out, but I'm not in a hurry to do that just yet. Um, these two asteroid shards. We can send these guys, three of them actually. These things tend to be heavy. So, if you have a, uh, a ship that has these in there, um, be careful with them. I've never banged them in anything, but I suspect that if you get them, uh, if you bang it up against a wall or an object, it'll destroy it. So, I'm going to kind of treat these things as like little bombs, you know, little uh, dangerous things. So, 
Uh, these are furnace items. Dang, these are probably actually tether worthy to the uh, furnace. On occasion, I'll run into these on ships, but not very often. So. All right, let's tether you in there. You're probably better suited than spending 20 minutes with the grappler. Come on, come on down. This one's heavy. It's a lot of mass to this one. It doesn't want to move. Yeah, a lot of mass. It has a lot of inertia once it gets going. There we go. Get those guys in there. Whoa, those things are money. Look up there at the top. Should hit uh, salvage rank one here out of this. Boom. Oh, yeah, those are big chunks. Look at that. That's some good stuff right there. Okay, let's see. Uh, a few strip lights to get out. Always save the strip lights. That's my motto in this game. Uh, okay, and I'm not going to deal with... Well, yeah, I, I, may, I can grab a couple things at the cockpit. Normally I save it for, uh, for last, but the door's open and it's inviting and saying, come on in. So, here we go. But nothing electrical. If there's a junction box in here, I'm not touching it. Um, there's some of that stuff. I might... Mm, yeah, I'll go ahead and grab it out. Why not? Go ahead and get these valuables out. Uh, normally I save this for last, um, but by this time, this whole back half of the ship is gone. There's nothing there. It's just the cockpit. And when you go to use the grappler, it starts tumbling around and it... And it screws with your orientation a little bit, makes it a little bit of a uh, pain in the butt to uh, get some of these pieces out and then work on the rest of the cockpit. So I'll go ahead and yank them out here. Um, you're not restricted to do this in any particular method or order. Um, the real strictures I have have to do with disabling uh, power, fuel, um, decompressing the uh, ship's atmosphere, all that kind of stuff like that, as quick as possible. Simplifying the exterior and then getting any real high valuables out first um, along with Saving electrical items power cells battery packs junction boxes uh, Whenever you're doing a compartment for last uh, Because they have a tendency to spark and catch uh, catch things on fire and cause trouble. They're just drama so, so You can see little sparks that shot off that guy so, I'll get the two problem uh, children out here. Salvage secured. Actually, hang on a minute. I'm distracted by the floor lights. Gotta get those. There you go. Complete teardown. Gotta do it right. Okay, done and done. And one more. Come on out, baby. Okay, those larger terminals tend to be the, uh, the drama queens. Their money too, and all these computer terminals. Be careful as you drag them out, because the slightest thing like that, like I just did, I barely scuffed it, started bzzz, sending it everywhere. That's why I like to save them for last. If you could imagine a scenario where you've got a fuel tank sitting right there, and, and you're dragging that thing out, and you accidentally scuff it up against the door frame or the side of the you know the cabin wall or whatever, and all of a sudden it starts sparking the fuel tank, and then kaboom, and then you lose half the ship, all because of barely across the side so those uh those computer terminals are they're drama queens and i just like saving them for last so there you go uh let's see that's all side stuff yeah yeah let's go ahead and take these out whatever strip lights it's there for the taking you see come get me out bdc take me now so <laughs> i gotta do it um ooh, i missed a light there right, let's get him and we're going to go over to the top next. So, stringer tool, we've got, same as the bottom, we've got these top roof plates. The ship is definitely not built for creature comforts. Whoop, get these guys off right here. Now, the only one deviation here is you've got a cargo hatch attached to that guy. So, uh, we need to separate him off, and that's easy. It's just a couple little cut points. Um, no big deal. 
And then he is a barge item. So he's money. You are so money. Here you go. Let's get that guy down there. Okay, get him down to the barge. And then the rest of this is processor stuff. That's the cargo hatch framework there. And then you get in there. And then let me just go ahead and drag him and tether him in. And then we have one more. Go ahead and tether him into the furnaces, or to the furnace, the processor. There we go. Now let's make sure he doesn't go in. Yeah, he's good. All right. Yeah, like I was saying, these uh, mackerel ships, they're pretty easy. But once you get your own routine down on um, on how to do these, you wind up kind of banging through them pretty quick. Um, and there's not much in the way of real significant variances on them. With the exception of maybe the Exolab, it's a little bit of a weird one. Um, I mentioned it earlier, the one that I uh, that I did first, that I wound up making a video out of, it was a free play one. Um, high difficulty, whatever. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting the uh, atmosphere on it. Um, depressurized, evacuated, whatever word you want to use for that. So, okay. Now that we got the cargo hatch, we got our the roof in the center section done, and we've got the bottom out and all the uh, valuables there are out, we want to take the sides out. So on this, uh, depending upon what stuff we have in here, you can use a split saw. We can start taking these cut points out. Um, if you get near a fuel tank like that, obviously switch to the stinger. And, and don't hit the fuel tank. And be careful. Okay, and that should be enough to take that out. Um, we have nacelles here, and you did not forget about those. So those are easy. I'll go ahead and knock out the uh, starboard one here. Should have done that actually before I started going ham with the um, hull plating. So your nacelles are barge items, and these guys are high dollar money, and they just sit in there. You just cut the points, they'll kind of flow down on their own a little bit, or you can get behind it and push it out. And then you just tether them straight down. Piece of cake. Nothing to it. Okay, so back to our plates over here. Uh, Nanocarbon hull plating. These are tether items um, to the processor. Just yank them right off. I think I got this third one, didn't I? Let's find out. I did. All right, good. And if you're doing a complete tear down, make sure you don't miss any lights. Now this one, since we have a fuel tank in here, I'm gonna gingerly, carefully, gracefully pull him out of there. Very volatile item, get him down to the barge as quick as possible. Okay, uh, I think that's it as far as volatiles. There's a um, power cell there. We're gonna save him until these uh, these plates are out, which I'm going to do right now. Get that split saw off of there. Save the strip lights. Okay. Tethers. This is where you're going to use the bulk of your tethers on these uh, ships. So, boom, boom. Peel those guys out. There we go. All right. And get our strip light. Now, for the power cell, since I've already done the valuables... I think, um, yeah, all of them inside the cockpit, it's empty. I don't really need to worry about anything. Okay, get thumbs up there. So we can go ahead and pull him off. Boom. That thing's money, too. So, okay, that's one side. Now let's go to the starboard side and start having some fun with him. Okay. We're going to have to deal with, on this one, the reactor and the airlock. So be careful when you go ham with the split saw. Back to the stinger on this one. Looks like we've got some uh, cargo boxes in here to uh, deal with. Okay, let's make sure these guys are not attached. He's attached. So we've detached those three objects. Swing over to our tethering. And pull these three out. Did I not disconnect him? Hmm, let's look. Where did I miss? 
Oh, this is the one that has the stuff on it. Okay, all right. That one cut point right there. Good times. Good. There we go. Get off. It's trying to carry me with it. You definitely don't want to get carried into the processor, that's for sure. Okay, and then things of note. Your little storage boxes. Look, everything's down there. Account credit applied. Go on, strip light, and then boom. And we're going to finish over here. Um, one thing I wanted to knock out real quick. Uh, since the uh, airlock is disabled and it's open, go ahead and take the uh, door switch off, send him down to uh, barge heaven. Now you've got six cup points here for the airlock. This is standard fare for all the airlocks in this game. Uh, be careful of your backdrop with the stinger tool. We do know that there's a reactor up there somewhere. So I saw the uh, plating in the um, director plate in the scanner. So I want to be really careful about what I'm doing here when I take this out. Okay, he's disconnected. One thing you can do, and I talk about this uh, in some other videos, you want to make sure the airlock's disconnected. Click your grappler on it only. Shake it around. You'll see only the outline of it um, uh, highlighted there. Grappler, or excuse me, the airlock with a grappler. It can go straight down to the uh, barge. You don't have to take the switch out of it. There's our reactor. Okay. So the obstruction to getting to this was the airlock. So we had to get that and handle that, get that plating off first. Now with this, since we're near the reactor, I could technically use the uh, split saw here, but I'm not going to. It's just, what if you have a, you know, a whoosh of the mouse and then the whole cutter tool goes sliding off to one side. Now all of a sudden you've sliced the reactor and it goes into meltdown and it kabooms. Uh, and that's what we call a bad thing. So let's get that off and out of there. Okay. All right, so as far as the reactor in a position like this, they're easy to take off. I do not use tethers for these, um, not initially. Um, a lot of these are vertically mounted facing down, and then once you take any plating off the bottom, you just tether it and pull it straight down. On this one, I am going to yank it straight out and then just send it down like yay. Three seconds, you're done. That's it. Salvage three reached. Well. They say the teardown's complete, but I'm not done yet. So, let's see. All right, those are processor items. Some of these mackerels, and this is a, uh, a newer thing here. They have this, some kind of storage grating or railing or whatever it is. Um, this is going to be split. Thanks. It's going to be split from the rest of that uh, framing there, where some of it goes to the processor, some of it goes to... The uh, furnace. So what we're gonna do is once I get uh, re-upped here, um, I'm gonna split up those into two different uh, two different pieces. I'm gonna cut all those uh, those little railings out. There's cut points that are provided there, and then send those over to the processor. There you go. Finish the job, BDC. Do it the right way. These are uh, stubborn uh, cut points. You know what? Maybe I'll just split saw them there. We'll have to wait around for that. Okay. These guys just push out. They're kind of heavy. Don't use the charge push. Use the regular one. There. Processor for him. Uh, we could probably honestly tether these since they're heavier objects. Just yank them straight out of their uh, their mountings. And then we have, it looks like, a couple more here. Uh, be mindful of your backdrop. Again, with the split saw. That should be the thing that always comes to mind with this. I'm not going to care about that, um, whatever that is over here is uh, equipment mounts. I don't care. Whatever. That can go sent, be uh, sent into the processor, so the thing's going to complain a little bit, but I don't care. So, let's try a tether on this last one over here. Let's see. We'll saw these two mounts off. And then, let's tether him in and see what happens. See if it's too strong or what, because it feels like it's heavy, so... 
Yeah, that's fine for the tether. Good stuff. Okay, so everything from the cockpit back, the back end of the cockpit is done and empty. We've taken everything out of it. All the stuff needs to get sent into the uh, furnace. So we take these four cut points off here. This is very, very simple. They made this ship real easy to take apart. Then once that's done, we're going to have some connecting, a uh, little bit of connecting tissue here. These rails right here. You can shove the cockpit off forward uh, just to kind of get him out of the way. Now we have a box. So what I like to do is cut the box in half. Sometimes you'll have door framing halfway across here. You just slice the entire thing down. Um, but usually it's these little um, aluminum beams. Cut those apart, and boom. Now you have these two big sections. One goes there to that furnace, and the other one goes to that one. And they just split apart and go their separate ways. Literally. So, there you go. All right. So the last thing that we want to do here, actually it's a two-fold thing. I'll go ahead and do the, uh, the glass um, cockpit thing. There's a few different ways to do this, but the game might complain that you're sending a furnace item to the uh, processor because this is attached to the uh, hole plating. So I take the split saw and just kind of go in squares around it. Okay, he's still uh, attached. That should detach that piece there. Then do the same up here. This is one way to do it. Um, I did it slightly different in the uh, station hopper video I did yesterday. Um, but you get the idea. So, just kind of logically think about it. And if you were to take the glass out, this is how you do it. But the glass is not a uh, not a money item, really. So, you could really just send this entire cockpit um, piece into the furnace, and it won't really make a whole much difference. Um, but since this is a complete tear, tear down, you know, like I do in other videos, I try to go as precise into uh, how I do everything. You know, uh, there you go. Okay, so getting this plating off, use a scan tool, you'll see the aluminum bars across there. They're a little bit hard to see. Poke them, there you go. There's eight of these. So get these guys apart. It's a little bit boring. But ideally, and hopefully, it will keep the interior section enough to where the interior cabin, we can slide it off in two pieces. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, sometimes it does. Nope, it's all still one piece. So she's going to start moving around a little bit here. The moving around thing is one reason why I opted to go ahead and get all the uh, crap out of it earlier. Okay, this one did not fly apart and go uh, nuts like it normally does. So this, you can probably just take it and send the entire thing straight into the furnace. Um, come on. Or not. Here, let me cancel that uh, that thing. I got all eight of these out, didn't I? Stop. Behave. This starts to become a little bit of a nuisance to uh, deal with when the uh, ship is at this point. Because uh, it has so little mass left now, there's nothing for it to really keep it from stopping. Um, so... You have to be a little bit careful. In case like that, if you have the entire thing floating off and you're not done with it, you just send it back to the uh, back over here with the tether. That'll get it away from the uh, the vacuum of the uh, furnace or processor or wherever it's wanting to get drawn into. Um, so I'll pull this uh, guy back and out of the way here. It'll make it a little bit easier to deal with. And you can manipulate it with the grapple, so that's kind of nice. Uh. Okay, let's go. Nice and easy. I'm surprised that this entire piece didn't pop out. I wonder if it has something to do with this 
It does have to do with that plate right there. Let's see that. Okay. All right. So let me double check and make sure that I've got all these things cut. Um, the only th other thing that's going to keep it held together will be if it's in the front, but I really don't want to saw that up. And I got to go back. So this is one thing that's um, a little bit of a uh, difference, deviation from the other mackerels uh, that have the reactor mounted in the back. Um, it looks like normally... Um, yeah, let's get that. Do anything else? Yeah, I'll go ahead and talk about that. Anyway, um, the reactor is in the back, so you got that reactor mounting plate um, back there. There's no obstruction, but out here there is one. So uh, I may have to get a little bit more creative in taking um, taking this one uh, down here. But ideally, what I'm trying to do here is separate the interior cabin pieces that go to the furnace from the outer hull stuff, um, which is certainly possible to do. So we'll get as much of this out as possible following the same rule that I normally follow, which is make everything as, as uh, least complex as possible. Shift him around. Come on down. Come on down. Come on out of there. Come on. Oh, you're a pain in the butt. You know that. Relax. You're not going anywhere. Relax. Come on. Come on back. Back up to the back of the station. I'm not going to deal with your, <laughs> with your drama. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. What can we do? I'm trying to slide that guy out of there. So how about tag it in the middle? Let's see if I can shift it around a little bit. Come on up. Nope, he looks like he's stuck in there. Now, I don't want to cut these things because they're valuable. So, stop. Okay. But what I was talking about earlier is the plate, the mounting for the reactor. I think it's on the opposite side over here. Uh, this is what's keeping this from sliding out and apart. So, otherwise this entire uh, piece there would just uh, come right out on its own. But, it's still attached up here in the front. So, the way to deal with something like this... Let's see. It. No, that's going to cut the entire plate. Let's hope maybe there's a corner here. One way would be to slice all this framing up and uh, pull them out like yay, um, but that might not actually happen here. Uh, it's this portion here that's keeping all of this together and keeping it from coming out. So in this case, I may just have to do that. I might have to um, split this guy up here since we cannot see the mountings, um, the beams that hold all this together, assuming that's what it is. And nope, we can't. Um, Let's just cut these sides off and see what happens. So, I want to reiterate that this is only because we have this um, reactor plate to deal with. That's the only reason why I'm having to do this. Okay, still no bueno over there. And he is just a problem child. All he's do doing is causing uh, problems. I can't get him slid out of there. So, never had to deal with it like this, so we can figure this out together. So, detached, detached, detached. Um, let's sting this corner off. I don't like doing this because it's destroying valuable material. Okay. Still did not come apart? Okay. Yeah, that's a little annoying. And you cannot cut any of these beams here, so... Well, may just have to, uh... Go ham with this and chop everything up. Um... So... Let's start with the side over here. That has this reactor plating on it. See if I can get a little bit more of a gap in there. And let's go. Let's see if that did it. I don't think that did. I'm trying to get in there and 
slice that off. There we go. Okay. So that was a little bit better approach then. Slice this corner off to separate this plate from the rest of it. And in doing so, it will keep um, a lot of the metal here that can still get sent over to the uh, furnace to be uh, torn down. And now this guy can come out and pull back. So there we go. That's one way to do it. Um, so that'll actually probably be handy in the future. That was my first time running into this. So I'm just going to stick with with that as the uh, solution. Here's one of those toss-ups. We cannot separate the reactor plate from the uh, aluminum panel it's attached to. So it's a toss-up. Okay, in a case like that, take the plate, take the uh, panel with the reactor plate, send it to the processor instead. So let's do that. There's, uh, there's more there, and it's more valuable, uh, I think, to do it that way. Okay, you get back up there, and then we're about to be finished with this thing, finally. I think that's it. There's that one plate right there. Grab him. Get in there. And then that should be it. So into the processor you go, cockpit piece. Let's go ahead and use two. And flip around. I'm going to make sure he doesn't get sucked into the... Uh, furnace here so there we go the whole point behind that was to try and split the cockpit hole plating the carbon from the interior uh, metal so i hope that makes sense the the whole fuss behind that for the last however many minutes that was of dealing with that drama so i think that's it that is uh that's all she wrote there we'll scan nope don't see anything boom there you go heavy cargo mackerel piece of cake Nothing to it, really. Um, this took a little bit extra time just because of the cockpit drama and all that, but um, yeah, not much to it. Um, they're uh, they're pretty uh, simple to do. Yeah, that needs to go into the processor, so for next go around, that's what we'll do. And I finally hit rank 10. Good times. I got a bunch of stuff unlocked. Good stuff. So there you go. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, I hope this helps somebody out there. Uh, I love doing these videos. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm still getting the biggest kick out of this game, and, and I really like the newest update and going through and seeing how they um, had their rework stuff. Um, and then, like I said earlier, how they stretched the level progression out a lot more. Um, this is good stuff. I have a lot of fun with this. Questions and comments, leave them down below. If you would, please smash that like button um, if you like this video. And thank you much for watching, and see you guys in the next video.